right, everyone, we're back to more for the 2024 Stoneburner Open for Dune Imperium Uprising. We host and comment to the Black Shadow, and we continue our coverage of the group stages for the competition. So we have our first look at Group K, which was the first game of this group I've covered so far. And here's a look at the table. Uh, this is the sixth game of the group here, and this one's been featuring Raven, Axles, Unlucky Pow, and Cherry J currently topping the table. With two wins from two, Cherry J can guarantee top spot of the table with victory in this match here. Uh, even with a difficult result in this one, they've still got a decent margin of error with the two wins in their back pocket and the one more match to be played. Uh, further on down the table, Rayvern's kind of still in mid-table respectability. We want to get a decent result to kind of ensure they finish with a top five finish, preferably a reminder that it is top two that go through directly to the quarterfinals after four games played by everyone. And third, fourth and fifth will have to go through an additional wildcard run. Round. Have a little bit further down, Axles. Six points from two games with two second places isn't bad going at all, but they'll feel like they want to get a more decisive result to kind of stop them lingering about uh, the fifth place mark. And Lucky Power, unfortunately, not been a good start to the competition the last phase of the first two games, so he's going to need to try and find a result here in order to get themselves back into contention. Okay, so setup is done here. Uh, Raven is going to be first player to play off in the blue seat, which means it'll be Unlucky Pal sitting in fourth in the yellow or two pick first. Let's look at the opening row and everything else going on. So opening a couple of contracts, you've got the Harvest Free uh, and the Sardaukar Agent Recall. I do rate Sardaukar Re the Agent Recall. I just think it's pretty nice. It gives a lot of uh, extra use to a space that people sometimes are not very keen on. Being able to recall an agent and have that extra action is really, really nice, I do think. Uh, Imperium Row is uh, pretty, pretty fun. Uh, Public Spectacle is going to be eyed out. One out of two in the deck. Uh, exceptionally powerful card, no doubt about that. And there is probably going to be some early revealing fun and games for that. Judge of the Court is also there as well, which we've seen once or twice now in games that we've covered. Uh, I think it'd be a tricky card to get points out of, but definitely it's pretty nice when you can. Uh, spacing gives favor, unswerving, and ecological all fairly solid enough as well. So a pretty decent row. As for the leaders... Uh, we are missing Wadib, and we are missing uh, Lady Jessica, I believe it is. So, uh, Gurney, I'm uh, Gurney. You're gonna see, you're gonna see Margot and Faye definitely. We've obviously intentions for spies with public spectacle, especially Margot. will want to get that a lot. As for our fourth person, I don't know who will take him. Maybe Stabarn. Uh, Irulan. This isn't a bad row for either, and with the Sarkar contract, that's pretty nice. So. I think she'd be pretty good. Staban would be very brave, and Staban would be forced to reveal, like, after one action, almost certainly. But I expect you're going to see a very spy-heavy game here. Um, so Irulan might be a good shout to play against that. But also Gurney's there as well. So we're going to try and shift the camera slightly to the side. Um, obviously, we're still learning, uh, you know, where best to position the camera for these ones here. It's a bit tricky because this obviously gets in the way of blue, though, with the, the chat box. And I, I like keeping that up so you can kind of see what's going on. There's a bit of a record there. So it's a little bit of a... Uh, you know, we're trying to find the, the blend in between. Uh, so, uh, Unlucky goes for Margo and Forth. Not a surprise. Um, the question is, is how brave does Cherry J want to take? Like, Staban is an option, but you know, if you're playing Staban, you are almost certainly going to have to reveal after one action. And that's if someone in front of you doesn't already. If you take Staban and Public Spectacle goes, what is your backup plan? You're not going to be able to live off um, Spacing Guild or Ecological. But Esteban is taken regardless, so this is dangerous. Um, if uh, Fade Rather gets taken in front, I think you... Is there a world where you play Esteban Tuek and you simply just auto-reveal for Spectacle? Like, if you miss your faction access and if you miss your ring, do you ever just insta-reveal? I've yet to see anyone actually, like, insta-reveal uh, in this game in a competition match so but we've seen a lot of a lot of strange stuff in the in the few games that we have covered so it, it's possible fade uh, if so zogi will see the fact zogi by the way is um that is axles by the way um will notice that all the spy leaders are gone bar fade so it's very likely they've been chosen behind him uh because jessica's probably not been chosen wadi was also missing wadi might have been taken maybe but you know fade is gonna be pretty popular with this board so he goes for Irulan. I did say Irulan might be a decent spot here. So Raven's got to decide, basically, is he going to take Fader Alpha and reveal after one action? 
If you're taking Fade, you, you've got to be prepared to reveal early here. There is going to be a revealing. People are going to fight after Spectacle. And I don't put it past this table for someone to reveal instantly. I really think it might happen. Goes of Gurney Halleck, though. Decides not to get stuck into this. And here we go, then. So opening conflict is the Fopter Skirmish. We've seen that a few times now in a row. Uh, yeah, the intrigues. I, I think this is probably my favorite um, of the skirmishes. I think it's interesting. I think it kind of makes for an interesting mid-game. Those intrigues start getting out, makes stuff a little bit trickier for players. Gurney doesn't find any faction access, so he'll just go Arakeen and probably try to draw. Irulan pulls double faction access, but no ring. Wow, and Stabon has got one of those hands where Stabon legit might just hard reveal here for Spectacle. He's missed everything. And of course, Brent Meister Barn with no diplomacy has a nine card deck. So even with hard revealing, he's got a one in six chance of finding Spectacle immediately. Which I don't know if you'd want that or not. It's not a matching combat as well. I think you might see an a, a instant reveal here. It's very possible. Gurney blasts it in at Arakeen, gets his plus, uh, gets his six strength, gives him a, a reveal of six. So, big moment here for Staban. There's only one person with faction access on this entire table, and that's Irulan. Irulan's going to get to instant hooks round two, because her ring and recon are coming. What a crazy run out this is. It's pretty wild. I mean, Irulan just has to... Does she know to frame kit? She has to frame kit, and she's going to be surprised when she gets back to Desert Tactics and can trash her dagger. So here we go. Does Cherry J have it in her to just insta-reveal for Spectacle? It's it's about as bad a hand as you could draw here. Oh, gonna take one action. No one likes insta-revealing. I can't see Margot insta-revealing with ring in hand. I just can't see it. But Gurney's not got much. Irulan's gonna be forced to go Fremen. This is the thing, when Stepan gets chosen and there's a big card on the row, like, this this sort of stuff happens. Oh, she does! Ha! Marco just insta reveals the spectacle. Oh, Stepan should have done it. Stepan, Stepan should have pulled the trigger. But it's pulled off Corinth City, which is a six coster. And Gurney might grab that. So we do see, for the first time, an instant reveal round one. The wild world of Dune Imperium and Uprising. Gurney's obviously going to go Assembly Hall, looking to get hold of Corinth. Picks up uh, Distraction, which is really good for him, by the way. Irulan. Is Irulan going to give up Worm Access? I don't think you should give up Worm Access for Corinth City. I don't think that's right. Corinth's a good card, but I think... Oh, she does! What is happening? Wow, this is crazy. And it's the Bond 2x, like, what is happening? Five Persuasion. Long live the Fighters is now on the row. And Gurney Halleck can get Long live the Fighters. He's got seven Persuasion. What? A bonkers around this. What? Has happened. I feel like this has gone horribly for Stepan to it, by the way. I mean, five persuasion and spacing kills favor is still not bad. Zog goes after. Uncover asset turns up, by the way. So there we go. We had, <laughs> we had an opening round with five agent actions and one hard reveal. What a bizarre situation. Misclick there. Guild Spy was going to be the next card, by the way. <laughs> Crazy. So, Gurney wins it. Irulan gets a cheap second. I, I don't know. I think I think Irulan's still meant to go Desert Tactics and get the, the, the hooks here. The problem is, unless she flukes Diplo, which is one out of six, that's the only problem I've got here. If she flukes it, she flukes it, I guess. Because of market opportunity, which is also pretty nice. 
She might have gone like Hagger Basin early just to try and get hold of Swordmaster with that. Gurney picks up Spring the Trap, which is also pretty wild. And we're going to move on. What a ridiculous opening round. Oh, Irulan might be regretting. I guess she maybe she feels like if it's a good one that someone's going to hit Hagger Basin and not block her, but I don't know. I guess the barn might go there a bit. Anyway, she doesn't find the access, so it doesn't matter. But she does repull Corinth City. What is happening this match? What is happening? Stabon pulls both his daggers, by the way. He re-pulls the other one. So he's going to get stuck in. Yeah, harvest contract for Irulan. No surprise. Curious to see what she's going to do with her ring. I guess she's trash out the dagger, probably. Stabon goes faction and says he's got to get a frame kit here. Like, how do you not? This completely absurd, absurd situation. Of course, everyone's got their faction accesses now, so now there's going to be a dive for uh, for the factions here. It's a mouse conflict, which isn't great for Margot. Do you just take deliver supplies and stay out of this? Gives you chances at uh, a future research station. Undercover assets is in the row, which is going to be interesting. That's the one. This is the card that lets you go to places uh, and you ignore the requirements of shipping, imperial privilege, and siege. Very desirable card. Better in the early game, of course, rather than later on, usually. Hard to see how anyone doesn't decide to get involved. Wow, Margot decides to draw. I guess she's saving Seek Allies? Or she can use Seek Allies and try and find a way to... I don't know. But Gunny's like, okay, I'm off to tactics. Trashes the Dune, keeps the sword notably. That tells you his intentions. So what's Irulan going to do here? She doesn't have. She can't get enough spice from opportunity outside of the battle. So I think this commits her to the fight. She kind of wants to. Remember, she's getting five coins from Corinth, though. So she could just spice refinery and reveal Corinth and just get Swordmaster next round. No one's going to beat her to it because she's got market opportunity. So there's no fear there. I I think that's the move for me. Is Irulan? I think I go refinery and put the two troops in. And say to Stavan, and say to Irulan, what you, uh, say to Margo, what are you going to do? I know you've got both faction access cards. In fact, I would actually probably even go to Spice Rock and just put in one and say, well, if you want to get involved with this fight, you have to get this faction access. I don't think you're going to do it. So I think that's the move for me. Spice Refinery, trash the dagger, uh, take the two coins, cross conflict is going to get you there, and just put in one troop and say, I don't think you're going to, go I don't think you're going to conflict here. I think I'm just going to pick up this two spice cheaply. You're gonna give up both fact. You're gonna give up your fact. Both faction cards. Uh, decides not to. Decides that they'd rather get hold of the spice here, but putting it all free is really awkward. She's pulled both daggers. Is gonna take unswerving into hand. Cannot deploy the troop. It should be noted. It's only um, only the generation without from and bond. Cannot send it in. Interesting sign to pick up instead of uh, trashing there. I mean, Stabarn's just going to keep putting it in here, surely. The problem is with this is now Stabarn could just go Spice Refining if he wanted to. Nope, just goes Assembly Hall, tries to fluke something. Oh my goodness, but he's pulled Manipulate. And he's going to get undercover assets. Oh my goodness. Stabarn to it needs to manipulate undercover assets right now. That is absolutely insane. It's one of his best cards. I mean, Truth Chance is also solid as well, but you got to get Undercover Assets out of her. That's so powerful for Stabarn to it, because obviously it's hard for him to get to certain spaces, and there it is. Oh, he goes for the Truth Chance! Oh, oh my god! Benny Operative comes off next. 
more insane cards. I'm really surprised Margot went so heavy at this. Really surprised. Maybe she feels like she's got to try and force Gurney into position here. Gurney admittedly can't put any more troops in. So basically she's saying, I don't think you've got an intrigue you can win here. He's off to secret, surely. He has to try and find uh, an intrigue that he can get some swords off. Misses. Leverage. Not what he was looking for. So Irulan's going to gamble here and he's going to get away with this. Bit of pretty crazy start to this match. She's got four persuasion. I mean, I think she's going to take the operative instead of undercover assets. I've got a funny feeling. Yeah, it does. Needs to take the, do something about it. It is mandatory. I have to tell them. It's the bomb with three. Has, well, Truth Trance is there. And he's just going to commit to it. He just thinks, well, I'm just going to reserve my Diplo, basically. I mean, it, it can't be bad, but I, st I think I've got assets there. I don't know. Anyways. Margot with a couple will take assets for sure. And then Gurney with three is probably going to take, like, Watermaster, probably. It's logical. Might go just purely for the faction access. I places comes off next, by the way. Some insane cards coming off. Where's all my weirding womans? I do think everyone's a little fortunate here. And I do reckon if she didn't find that second dagger, she wasn't going to commit everything in. I, I think I probably still would have gone refinery, but in any event. Because now she can't actually get to Swordmaster. Um, so the Barn in Fury could perhaps beat her to it. Because she has no spice to use for opportunity now. It's kind of the weird spot of this. I guess means I'm just going to go all in. If I win, great. And if I get same place, it's also fine. So I can go either way. Regardless, finds the point. We'll move on. I'm not even going to try predicting what's going to happen in this match. This is, this is going to be a, uh, you know, buckling for the ride. Tessalotti is next. Desirable card. Uh, does everything interesting combat here? Everyone sees the money and wants it. Everyone sees the bumps and spies and wants it. Gurney has the Fopter match, of course. So he would also like a piece of this. Joined by someone who's... Part of this group, but uh, whatever else. Is the barn just going to hit Spacing Guild, collect the water? Pretty terrible hand for um, the barn here. Gurney, so Gurney finds along with the fighters. The problem is, is Gurney Hallock has only got one card left in his draw pile. Um, as long as the fighters requires three or more cards uh, to rock and roll here, so. Yep, Margot obviously is just going to, quite frankly, spam the ever-living heck out of espionage and public and public spectacle. That's all you're going to do here. But yeah, so Stagioni's got the daggers for long the fights. He can't really use it unless he's going to be able to draw two cards here. Unless he might send it to the front kit anyway, but he will not be able to use the agent box ability. There is, uh, there is no draw pile. So he's happy just to take it for the faction access, I guess, which kind of hurts a little. I would have been... Is there a way you could have maybe just kept the swords? And win the conflict? Hmm. Irulan does not pull any city access. She cannot get to Siege. I think she has to just prioritize getting Swordmaster then, surely. Imperial Basin. Pick up the couple of spice. Mark opportunity. Get to Swordmaster. And then just dip low whatever you can. What alternatives you've got here? Desert Tactics. 
I mean, you, I don't think anyone else. I don't think you're in a huge rush to get into desert tactics. No, uh, only person that's got war is the barn. And obviously, he doesn't have. He's he's relying on truth trance to get him there. So, just decides to pick up the 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 water and the troops. So she's gonna go deep desert, I assume, to pick up Swordmaster. But okay, Stavan just goes takes the base of mine instead. He'll be happy with that. No spies out for um, Stavan on the maker spots. Margot's got nine persuasion, by the way. Margot kind of wants to just reveal for Spice was flow, or maybe like in high places. Probably is what she'd go for. But it's kind of weird. In high places, obviously, is nice. It generates a spy. But the big part of in high places is pulling two spies for the reveal. But using a spy is for espionage. So I don't know how exactly that's going to work. Looking at it. The other issue you've got is if you take an action, if you want in high places, you might not get there. But I don't think it's going to stop her going from uh, from playing this. She figures, well, if I get it, great. Otherwise, I can get Spice Plus Flow. So that's what we see here. Shadam's favor is turned up. So he's going to probably take the Spice Flow unless something else big comes off, which is not, not likely. Oh, Gurney's going to get to Siege. He wasn't expecting this. I think Gurney has to go all in here as well, by the way. He has to try for this. <laughs> there are, at the moment, the mod, it's a little hard sometimes to pull troops. It's been noted. So Diversion comes off to get the Spawn Basin before Staban does. Makes sense. So what is your alarm going to do here? Deep Desert gives her the money for Swordmaster. She's given up Diplo, though, which is a little sad. But I guess if you've gone down this route, like, you've committed yourself to this, right? The problem is, is she's concerned that if she, uh, because of the, the conflict, it's a bit awkward with the money out there. She's worried if she doesn't take the cash now, she might be beat to Swordmaster by someone else. Saban could get the cash. Um, maybe Margot, like, is going to go, like, refine, gets, I know. I, I don't know, there's, there's weird stuff that can happen. Gurney might end up, there are worlds it happens, but she's going to feel, but she's going to brave herself here. Going to try and deny deny stuff, but I don't know. This is kind of a bit weird for for Irulan. She's going to go tactics by the looks of it. She can't feel she's going to win, so just going to take the cash and just try to get the Swordmaster first. I mean, I don't hate this, but now like you're basically giving up Deep Desert. Like Saban could very easy get his way there. Five persuasion, he takes high places. Spire wherever he wants. Takes the other deep desert spot, which is reasonable. That probably will get shifted later on. So Margot's got nine. Does she buy? Just take the spice must flow here? I think so. I think too great. Junction of Quarters is a nice looking card, but you got to feel like you're going to get the Alliance to want run that a lot. I think you just take the point here. Now like you got public spectacle. You don't want to be filling up your deck with like several cards. I, she's looking at spy network for public spectacle, of course, but you've already got spy generation view ring. I, I, I feel like I'd be. I know it's only round, it's only round three, but I think point to point here. Yeah, I, I think I think this is better. I don't think there's anything out that's quite strong enough. I think I, I'm happy with just taking the point. So Gurney's going to get to match this, which is a result for him. He's going to have to work out where he wants to put his spy, probably on like a faction, I'd imagine. Not going to buy anything for four. Not even interested in like ecological. Wow, I'd have taken ecological station. That pairs quite nicely with Long of the Fighters just to give you more water. I think that's, uh, I think I'd be buying at least that or spy network, one of the two. He might get spy network because he's got spring. I think both are reasonable choices. Depends how he sees it. 
Problem with Spy Network is he kind of gets it for the Spy, and then it's kind of just like a bit of a filler card. He'll probably have to trash it on later on. He's still got both his daggers, so yeah, I, I like this more. Oh my goodness me. Oh, he's got five? Oh, he has got five. He can get to take both of them. Then, but still, Guard the Devoted is out next. This game continues to be absurd. Does block up the faction. No surprise there. Irulan with only five. Cannot get Steelgar. Cannot get Junction. But look at Imperial Spy Master, which looks just for the Emperor access isn't too bad. Yeah, I don't hate that. Harvester comes off next, but uh, I don't think we should be taking that. So, nothing to be played here. Gurney's going to... Just go Desert Survivor as well. Yeah, okay, I guess. Oh my god, no, it's still a trade out there. What is happening? This row is nuts. So, Gurney's going to take this down. I assume he's going to probably continue to blocking up faction spots, but I don't know. Irulan will take the free cash. Staban gets second. But Irulan will feel that she's going to get the sword master before anyone else. And we'll be moving on here. Let's see where this spy is going. Mm, okay. Might be thinking future uh, wall blows. I can definitely see that. He hasn't taken his thing. Um, next up is Spice Raiders, which is an absolutely monstrous combat for Gurney Halleck here. He's pulled along with the fighters again as well, which is pretty nuts. So I think Gurney's going to close his eyes and commit himself to this and try and win it with a worm. But both Staban and Margot want daggers, uh, want the match here. Both of them have drawn faction access. Might we see a highline from one of them? They wouldn't have the spice to, to, to get the match, but I think it'd be okay. Margot's just going to go shipping here. Using undercover agent, she ignores the influence requirement. No, she's gonna go siege. Just you have to do it manually. Just just move the agent to do it manually. Or whichever way. I I whatever you want. Yeah, it's the only thing with undercover assets is that um, on a total point, uh, the, the the mod doesn't pay attention to like this card being played, so players have to like go up with the faction and then go back down. It's a little, it's just a quirk of TTS being TTS. Either way, they go and get their way to the hooks uh, earlier than planned, which is nice, I guess. Which means Gurney Halleck's gonna have to go Hagger Basin immediately here. You'd imagine. I think she might place your damn saver as well, yep. And she's going to commit herself entirely here. And she's going to go all in. And this is basically trying to ward off Gurney and saying, do not get involved. But I don't think this is going to stop Gurney from flirting here. He also can play leverage as well, which is kind of useful. Because he will pick up a spice at Hagger Basin. Spy, of course, will stay there. You'll learn Paul's Corinth City. Hmm. She's going to be able to hit the Bene Gesserit first, so no one's really dangering, endangering her here. But her hand is a bit awkward on access. I assume she will want to reveal Corinth, so I assume she's going to be wanting to recon here, but she might not get to a city space. It's possible.
Both Sardaukar contracts out on their own now, by the way. Don't see that often. You feel like Irulan probably just goes secrets here. Like, she's in no danger of losing the Swordmaster. There's, there, there's only one card out there that could beat her to it, and she's got it. So she can easily go secrets and put down some spies here. Staban can't beat her to it. Like, she's totally safe here, so surely you just go secrets and put a couple of spies down. I don't know where you put them, though. Might just block up the other factions. I imagine one is going to go on the Emperor's spot. The other one might go for him just in case. Skill Spy Trade is found. It's a nice card. Oh, it's only one spy. Sorry. Goes for the, just goes for the city space. Interesting. Does Irulan have research station intentions here? Or maybe she's just thinking, get back to refinery. I'm not sure. Surprised I didn't go to a faction spot. Anyways, Stabarn's up. I feel like Stabarn's meant to just go refinery to get hold of his... It's kind of weird, though. If Irulan's going to get a Swordmaster, Stabarn doesn't need any more money. So, actually, he doesn't need to. I feel like Staban. Oh, I think Staban Twix meant to just go deliver supplies and deep desert. It feels like that's got to be the move here. Yeah, it is, and just be absolutely laden with resources. No one's going to be able to beat him to it here. That's the thing, because Irulan decided to uh, go down this route. She was always giving up deep desert, and Staban was the likely recipient, which is what we've seen. So it'll be Dagger and Ring. I wonder if he'll pull his uh, spy from Deep Desert if he'll leave it there. I don't know. Might leave it there for now. Doesn't really need to draw. And it might pick up an extra spice or two as he goes. Marga with Diplo, and that's about it. Does not want to draw. I don't think she wants to go Frem Kit here. I feel you just got to use your Diplo to somewhere. But if you don't want to draw, it's Desert Tactics. And Desert Tactics is fine. Desert Tactics trash out, like, one of your daggers. Kind of scary, though. Yeah, she really wants to go Frem Kit, but she does not want to draw her hand and uh, draw into her deck here, because obviously she will not see any of these cards soon, so... I think she's gonna talk herself into tax. No, she's gonna she's gonna do it. She figures she's gotta keep um, people away from Fremkit here. Her next hand could be kind of awkward though. That's the downside. She's gotta put the troop in here. I feel. Gony Hat, by the way, has got all those spies out, and Spring the Trap is coming, and I think he might do it. But nowhere, no frem kit for Long of the Fighters now. So he'd have to go like Arakeen or Spice Refinery. He can Spice Refinery and still get a point out of the conflict. And he's going to use it. I think he's going Refinery. Yeah, I think he's going Refinery. So he pulls three cards. One gets drawn, one gets discarded, and one gets trashed. It's all done face down. He might draw it in his hand, though, because I'm here, I guess. But it should probably be done this, so it's, it's distinguished that it's outside the hand. So, recon, ecological, and convincing. Gotta keep ecological in hand. That water is so important. So, I expect recon to be trashed and convincing to be discarded. He's got no persuasion in his hand, really, anyways. Still has to be shown publicly what he's doing, of course. Yeah, and Ecological will be taken in hand here. Ecological station is so good with Long the Fighters. I mean, to be honest, anything that has a Fremen bond is so good along the Fighters. It's just such a great driver of them. 
So super happy at that. The question is, would he spring the trap here? Spring the trap. Oh, I think it only I think it only ties actually. He's gonna be at five, but Margot's got both daggers. So I don't think he can actually win it. Swordmasters, of course. And then Margot's got a couple. Won't be buying anything. Might get a prepare the way. Yeah, I don't think Gurney can spring here. He he can only tie Irulan, and I cannot see him using Spring the Trap to force a tie. He'll take the resources. The question is, would he would, would he ever spring to like stop a second place denial? I don't know. So only a couple for him to buy. So I don't expect him to buy anything. Maybe a prepare, but I don't really think it's that necessary. Irulan can go to a city if she wants. Irulan knows she can't win the fight, however. So I suspect it would just be Arakeen. Arakeen put a troop in. It kind of makes it difficult for Staban to put anything much in here. That's what we'll see. And Staban. Staban will have to deep desert now. There's nothing about it. Pulls a ring. That's a little unfortunate. That's not what you want to see as Irulan. Puts in all three. Decides she's got to make the block of Gurney for the water and deny him that. Which is I totally get. And I think that's fine. So will Gurney Hallett use Spring to get past that? I don't know. I don't. I think he should keep the spine. Does. Yep. Can put another spy down, of course. Uh, you could put it on a faction, but the problem is you've got nowhere to go. Do you just put it on the sh on instead of shipping? Shipping looks really good for draws. Could also go council, I suppose. Continue to make the shift there. I mean, that's fine. I think both both are okay. He's got potential six persuasion, by the way. He might. He might well lift his spies anyways, thinking uh, if he's going to do that, he might as well go council. He might lift these to get Steelgar or Junction. Junction's not bad. Steelgar is one of the strongest cards in the game, truthfully. So I think Stabarn Tuek is going to lift these spies for, for Steelgar here. Irulan's only got a couple. Yeah. Pairs are always nice to have. I think these spies are going. Yep. That's exactly what we do. So, surely going for Steelgar. Very, very powerful. Junction Headquarters is also pretty solid, by the way. And there's nothing wrong with Junction Headquarters in this deal. But Steelgar is Steelgar. So, Gurney, I assume, is going to give up on the wall. I don't see him using Spring to... To to, 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 to to tie here. So I, it's just going to be played as is. Oh, he does! <laughs> Gurney Alec. Spend spring to take the two water. I tell you what, Irulan won't be the most unhappy to see that. I think she can live with that. I think she'll feel, you know what, we charged him the absolute maximum. Margot's going to be annoyed. Because now she doesn't win it. It's a tie. Wow. Yonan will be feeling... I think she only gets a troop and a spice for the free, but I tell you what, I think she'll be feeling fairly happy with the result here. The fact it's forced Spring the Trap to go and that the, the two opponents tie. Wow. Pretty insane. It's a bit of just a, a, a just a wild match, this. And we're a long way from being over. Round five. It's only round five. Oh my goodness me. And it's Chome Security. Gurney Halleck's going in here. No world conflicts yet. We haven't seen any. So Hagger Basin it'll be. He'll be firing it in, of course. Water Master's in hand as well, which is pretty nice. 
I assume Mulan's just going to go back to the Bene Gesserit here, you would imagine. She does not have the... She's got the cash for the spice, by the way. So she can Highline at any moment if she wants. Staban is repulled Space in favor again. And I guess he as, if, as long as um, Deliver Supplies is there, he might as well go for it. It's a ma it is a it's a dagger conflict though. Staban to it might talk himself into highlining here. That's the tied one. Yep, and he does highline in immediately. This is all just this is so it's just all sorts of fun. This isn't it. People just constantly going in heavy, just saying, "Get out my conflicts." Margot's got spectacle in a ring. It's got to stop making use of it here. Espionage is blocked, but I suspect she probably will still hit it and probably double bump the Bene Gesserit to take the alliance, anyways. It's not the most creative strategy. Get spy on on Bene Gesserit and just keep it with spectacle, but you know. Doesn't have to be, I guess. So what's Gurney going to do here? Gurney can't win this, and he knows he can't win it. It's one of these conflicts where, like, again, like he he, he can live with second place. It's, it's the silly on the charm of security. Sometimes second place feels just as good as first. So, curiously what he's going to do here. He could, if he really wants to, go research station. But that feels like an overreach here. Margot Bowie pulls opportunism. So she's not going to bump the Bene Gesserit much anyway, I don't think. And he just takes a Silver Marshal, of course. Margot with no money, by the way. Needs to find some pretty quickly. I mean... Frame kit looks pretty good. Or do you just go Siege here? I think Siege probably is better. I don't know. You got seven persuasions. So this is an enticing time to try to make a punt for me because Spice must flow. But instead of trade, there's a couple of good cards out there. Frame kit and double draw, I don't hate. I think she will do. But she's got to she's got to find a way to Siege. That's eight Persuasion. So Assembly Hall is now a backup plan for Spice Must Flow. In an ideal world, though, she'd like to go Siege with Recon. Leave seven and pick up instead of trade. I think that would be her most ideal route here. So Barnes kind of working out what to do here. He might feel he's got to put in even more forces to get some intrigues going. Saban to it could also assembly hall and reveal early for interstellar trade. That also looks really strong. But he's just going to go ahead and uh, ship and uh, do it this way instead. Both are fine. Point taken. You feel Margaret's just got to start hitting Spice Refinery a lot here, right? Maybe Refinery, put the Spy on Siege and then hit that with Prepare the Way to get free water to give yourself deep desert chances. The problem is, is we've had no wall conflicts out yet. There's, I think, nine Tier 2s, I believe it is. And we've seen five, we've seen four of them so far, and none of them walled. So, it's fairly good odds that the next conflict is going to be behind a wall. It's about like sixty percent or something like that. So she can't rely on it. Feels the Arakeen spy is too important. Sorry about that. Oh, you only got two actions, of course. My apologies. So she's gonna go for uh 
She's going to go for Thingy here. Oh my god, Gertie Halleck is going in here. What? Wow. Basically telling us the barn, you're going to have to put in more troops here. Gertie Halleck is going in for this. Currently, they're tied. And the problem is, there is nothing Staban can do. Staban has no way of generating any more troops here. This is pretty bad for him. Unless Staban wants to go assembly hall with his dagger and gamble that he hits a... Uh, hits an intrigue that he can use. I can't see how he does that. Iran does it anyways. Oh, wow, and it would have actually been good for Stabarn. Stabarn actually would have won the fight off it as well. That's pretty insane. <coughs> That's pretty insane. Oh, Stabarn gives up the dagger. Oh, he's going for his other trade. God, he's going to win the fight. What? What is happening? Marco's got seven, which is what Stabarn was offering his other trade, but he will take Junction Headquarters, I guess. Ludicrous. Ludicrous stuff, this. And then Rebel Supply, you gotta get Interstellar Trade. There's no way you don't take Interstellar Trade. It'd be crazy not to take that. Has to take a contract. She'll take the draw, probably. I, I think the recall cool was better, but I think people should see the two card draws. I don't know. It depends what you want to do with it. I, I typically take the Agent Regal, personally. But the two card draws are also reasonable. If you're going to go down the Imperial Privilege route, then you don't need to worry about the draw agent recall too much. Anyways, Gurney Halleck is going to win this fight, which is completely ridiculous. Stepan Tuik has committed 14, 14 strength here for not a lot of return. Kind of wild that Gurney Halleck went research station and like threw it in here. I don't think Gurney Halleck is expecting to win this. But he's going to. Coordination taken. Irulan with nine will take the Spice Must Flow, and I assume Staban just has to take Junction Headquarters at this point. Like, there's a couple of nice cards out there, but I it's got to be that, right? He only takes the Sodokar Soldier. Interesting. Just thinks he can try and trash later on for an intrigue. The problem is Gurney, Gurney's deck is pretty big here. Seven, 14 cards. A couple of ones that he can't really use very well. It's a little cumbersome. Irulan's just accumulating quite nicely over there. Oh, Subversive comes off Sister Barn and he opts for that instead. Which I guess makes a degree of sense. I guess he's just taking the Emperor, right? Is that better than Junction? Maybe? I don't know. Got no intrigues at the moment. So perhaps. Anyways... Gurney wins this, kind of crazily. Irulan gets her intrigue for the troop. And will be, assumably, uh, buying some spice with opportunity. Question on Memphis is now taking. She gets both of the intrigues where it's like barely any swords, but you can do something to get up to five. Gurney's got to take a couple of contracts here. He took coordination, so he'll take that. And now we got acquire and deliver supplies. I guess you take acquire. Yeah, might as well. We're going to move on. This feels like a terrible round for Staban, though. Unbelievable. Six rounds, no wolves. That is. Wow, that is... I, I don't know what the odds of that are. I haven't started to work it out, but that is pretty unlikely. Pulled five of the six non wall conflicts. Insane. We might go the whole game here without finding a wall fight. It could definitely happen here. Shadow, shadow contest it is. Ilan's hand is a little tricky. She wants to, like, use Desert Ambush and do some trashing, of course, but the problem is uh, it's, it's all a little bit funky. 
just going to take the spice at Basin and trash out like a dagger or something. So the barn's got Truth Trance. No, Truth Sayer, whatever it is. Margot's hand is hideous. I could see her maybe talking herself into going research station here. It's a scary conflict for for um, for Margot as well. This is an alliance that she's currently holding. I guess she's got opportunism, I guess, as a backup in case, but it's still a little, little unpleasant. I think he just, yeah. He's trying to find subversive. Oh, he actually nails it. Oh, my goodness me. How do you find subversive visor there? What? So Margo's got to go either go, either go Arakeen or Research Station here. Hagger Basin is an option, of course. But there are problems with, with, with this. Like, it should be like, your worm, okay, and with what army? And it's kind of like not really there. Can't expect a ton of return for it. But Margo may also feel they haven't got a lot else to do here. And they're going to kind of see where the road takes them. How big is Margo's deck? 14 cards. Yeah, it's a little big. I'd love to try and get it down a little bit if possible. I would expect to see Research Station if she... Oh, no, she can't get there now. So it's Arakeen only. Is Gurney Hallett going to challenge Red for the Fremen Alliance? Gunny can hit the Fremen multiple times here. Long of the Fighters, Ecological, Sardo Car in the middle to recall agents if he needs to. Could put Ireland under a lot of pressure here with the Fremen Alliance. And Ireland is a little bit ahead here and has current city lying about, so there's a fair amount of license to go for it. Wow. Wow. Didn't immediately expect that. Is there a point where Gurney Halleck's getting just too aggressive? I don't know. But he's going to lose his base and spy. I think Irulan might go like Arakeen. She kind of wants to draw and try something, like maybe like uh, Unswerving Loyalty out of her hand for the two spies and then use Corinth afterwards. It's kind of what I feel like is going on here. She's got one spice for slow. She obviously wants to make sure she gets second. She also needs to use an Intrigue ASAP here because she would hate to lose Secure Spice. But she kind of also wants the money for Corinth, so it's it's a little weird. I feel Arakeen's pretty solid. I feel like... I don't think I'd do a ton else. I think Arakeen's fine. Draw a card, trash around in your hand. Except contracts, your way to do it. If you want to do it that way as well, that's also fine. Paul's the spy master. That was her last card to come was uh, was the spy master there. So Unswerving will be trashed here. And we'll be playing Corinth to Dutiful, she hopes. I think you've got to play Mark Opportunity now, whichever way you're doing it. I assume you're selling spies. Yep. The thing is, Stepan is going to the Emperor here. Right? Stepan has to be going dutiful. 
So Irulan's not going to be able to hit the faction spot. Nothing she can do about that. She'd have to go elsewhere. Fortunately, the couple of cash came up, which was pretty useful for him. So, so first if is use. It's a one-time use. So Margot is going to get to Arakeen. Or she might go Refinery. She still doesn't have a Swordmaster, by the way. So, giving up on the fight here. So Gurney knows he's good. Very unlikely to be challenged. I mean, Irulan's thinking of doing something a bit dastardly, but uh, but Irulan, but we'll know Irulan's got Corinth is intending to use it, so probably doesn't need to put in any more forces. So here it comes, and now the pressure will start being applied here. Has to draw one card to have a deck to use for long the fighters. So ring gets pulled. So we got Dune, Convincing, and the Dagger. Oh, trash the Dagger, discard the Dune, keep the Convincing, I guess. Unless you really think you want slash need the Dagger here. You've got no Intrigues, and everyone is sitting there with three. It's a little uncomfortable. Gurney Halleck's not buying any more cards. It tells you where he's at. It tells you where he's at in this one. So Irulan's going to have to go... I think High Council is the move, actually. I actually think High Council is the move. You've got the plus five cash. And you've got Secure Spice Trade. I think High Council is the move here. And she does agree. So, we'll take the current point, getting up to seven. So, the bar's still on action here. I don't know what he's going to do. He's got nine, so I assume he's either going Arakeen or he's just going to reveal for the point. Reveal for the point it is. Margo with four. Going if he can just put in the worm and be good at Hagger Base, and I, I can't see how he doesn't do that. I'd imagine it's weird, but he might not bother. He's already got one bump with the better Jester, unless he's going to go in for the. try and go for the Alliance. I guess he won't bother. He's got his ring. I'm not entirely sure what Gurney's going to do here. Does Gurney go Desert Tactics and really put the screw on here? Unfortunately, Iran's got questionable methods, so if she lost the alliance, she'd, she'd gain five swords, basically. He's kind of eyeing up, he's thinking, well, is it worth me going in for the worm or not here? At Hagger Basin. He might just go Siege, maybe, with Deep Desert plans. Figuring that Margo's going to Hagger Basin a lot, so he gets Deep Desert Worms. But again, the wall still exists, so maybe he's going to blow it here. And maybe blowing up the wall is the correct move at Siege. In fact, I think blowing up the wall is the correct move, definitely. You've got your Duke generation here anyways. You get the water. I think, yeah, Siege blow the wall feels like the move here. No. Well, mm. I mean, if it's propaganda, you're a lucky boy. And I think he's going to re possibly reconsider here. Also a little bit we're trying to make sure he wins the fight, but no wall blow. Well, what are you going to do if it's like Battle of Arakeen? Like, surely your whole engine here is built up largely on worming here. I feel like that's... Uh... I feel like that's a miss. I feel like that's a mistake. We'll see. 
I can't see Irulan playing both intrigues to, to take this down. So I imagine it will just play through as it is. But I heavily dislike not blowing the wall there. You've got no intrigues. Like, and it, it, assuming it's walled, which is going to be three out of four times. What, are you reliant on just going research station and winning it that way? Maybe. I don't know. Well, change leads have been found, which is pretty outrageous. So the Barn going to have to save his uh, Spacey Alliance immediately here. Here we go. Margo's got to pull a couple of intrigues as well. Impress she finds. Siege Ritual is basically, there's your Fremen point. On the house. That's pretty nice. So here we go. This is propaganda. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. What? What? Man, never punished. How on earth was that not a walled fight? What is happening here? So the barn has to go for his alliance, obviously. Oh, good. He's not pulled any faction at this to throw in, though. So he, he, he wants to harass it, but he's he can't take it out right here. Unless he goes and grabs Spice. I don't think he's ever going to go deep desert and take the spice specifically to take the Fremen Alliance. I can't see that happening. I cannot believe it's propaganda. That is so outrageous. Man. I feel bad for Staban and Irulan here, truth be told. But saying that, with all the worms that Gurney's been kind of trying to fire off here, like, he's still only at five points. So, Margot's going to work out what she wants to do here. She's got each other trade. She's got the Fremen bump in her hand. She has to discard a card for it. She's got opportunism as well as, like, an, an emergency. And to be fair, this is kind of those combats where she might have to consider using it. Potentially at the at the Bene Gesserit if it looks to go pretty badly. No spectacle, however. You feel like she's gotta score a lot of points here and score them pretty quick. She's gotta work out if she wants to go hag if she wants to go Hagger Basin now. She's trying to work out if I go Hagger Basin Highliner, where does that get me? 14. She's going to make the discard now, which is a little surprising. I think I would have, uh, I would have waited on that, but sure. Taking the sword master, getting the emperor point makes sense. Holding the powder in the keg here. Gurney's not got a great hand, so he's going to go research station with Watermaster and uh, look to rock and roll here. I cannot believe he found... I cannot believe it's a, this is not a ward conflict. It's so insane. And Paul's Harvester as well. Which means he can now even use Change of Legions on the Fremen Alliance. This is kind of outrageous drawing. Irulan needs to end this game immediately. I don't see how she can do it. Dutiful and Sadukar will give her... two points. Because she can go refinery in the middle of that. I do not see any way Irulan can in this game, though. And she's got to assume that her Throne Alliance could well be just be dead here. 
is a huge problem for Irulan here. What to do? If Gurney wins this fight, her alliance is dead. Though she knows it's kind of dead anyways with Change Allegiance is coming. Cannot believe how this round is, is playing out here. So Irulan's got to make a decision quickly here what she wants to do. Does she try to defend the alliance? The problem is, again, if Gurney Halleck wins this fight, it's probably dead anyways. Between Ecological and Diplo, along with the fighters, unless she can max it out here or Gurney does not win this fight, like, the alliance is over. And I don't think she can stop it. Horribly uncomfortable position for Irulan here. Really difficult spot, this. She deep deserts herself and takes the spice in hand. Highline is incoming. Margot's prepping up for it. Irulan's prepping up for it. Gurney's in blocked at deep desert. He's always got Hagger Basin, though. So the barn's going to siege and draw. He's got Stilgar coming. He could worm up. He could go deep desert himself. And he is. There's a bloodbath coming here. Margot has to highlight. If she if Margot's in the high line, she has to do it right now. elon has got the guaranteed access. But it doesn't mean she's gonna wait. But Margot thinks she's got to get the worm in here. And at least stop Gurney from drawing. I assume Margot's just hoping that Irulan doesn't actually have the, the Highlander access. But you've got to assume she probably does the way she's playing here. If Margot's getting this worm in, she's committing herself entirely to this fight. But of course, if she doesn't... She's got to decide, basically, does she want Hanger Basin or does she want Highliner? She cannot have both. Saban Tuik is, is indicating he's going deep desert. Even though just indicating she's going Highliner. Gunny's highlighting that he's just getting ready to blast everything in here. But Margo's going to go in and shut her eyes and hope this all kind of works itself out. So Gurney now is going to go and get some... Try and get some uh, munitions for the war. Finds Reach Group, which is not helping him. Gurney is at 9 Persuasion. His chances of trying to steal Chase Nietzsche have been stolen, though. Or at least steal the throne alliance, but he might be able to steal the spacing. Is the is the but is Gunny Halleck gonna pull out here? It's kind of a weird spot though. He might opt to, to wait this one out. So the barn's gonna gonna wait here. He's gonna wait to see what happens. Pays for privilege. Irulan now can't Corinth because she's ended up highlining. Left the spy there, by the way, for defense. It should be noted. Well, Margot Venering, what do you do here? Do you just go to the Bene Gesserit just to protect your alliance and trying to keep people away from it? I don't know. I, I feel like you're meant to go deliver supplies here. If they go for your alliance, like, you've got opportunism. So, I don't feel that going Bene Gesserit defense is, is correct. But you also feel like you're meant to get more forces in here. But if Stabarn's going to blast in a deep desert, there's nothing you can do anyways. The best you could do is Arakeen, put in a troop and impress and get two more. It's going to get to 11 strength. It's probably not going to be enough to stop the barn.
This is the problem. So I feel I think if yellow was going to commit, they probably had to do the highliner first and give up Hager Basin. Because now these units are kind of not really doing anything. Yeah, deliver supplies is the better move here. I agree with that. So, Goni's got nine. But he's got oh, he's got enough strength, actually. That's a lie. He's got um, the battle strength, so he's just going to chuck it in here. And close his eyes and hope he's good. And Staban Turek is about to lose his spacing alliance. If Goni Halleck wins this fight, by the way, it is game over. But he, he's not winning it. Irulan's going to take this down with intrigues. I don't know what her best move is now, though, truthfully. Corinth cannot be cannot be played for its action, but she might opt to go dutiful anyways. If she wins the fight, she only gets two bumps. But she can't score three points. The best she can do is, is get friendships with Spacing Emperor and get herself to nine. There is no ten point. Are you better off, like, using the ring to do something and trashing Corinth? Which seems kind of crazy. But sometimes in Irulan games, you have to make crazy moves. Or moves that look completely absurd. I've been there. You know you've got 10 strength of intrigues. The problem is as well is that question methods, you have to drop a bump to use it, which is pretty unpleasant. So you're left to either dutiful for the bump or you go Arakeen to put an extra troop. You've no idea what Gurney's got, but he's fired off Spring the Trap earlier. And you've got a couple of other big ones, so might figure she's good and just is going to take the bump and does. I don't hate that move. So Staban is prepped if he wants to blast in here. But he doesn't have to. Re-hits High Council. Oh my holy goodness. He's pulled streets stockpiling. <laughs> so he's just going to take the spice with slow here. Margo will believe a sigh of relief she gets her spice here. Very uncertain with the alliance situation, but she's going to be able to see what happens. So Gurney gets a lot of swords here. Sardaukar adds a sword for each other revealed Emperor card, which is both Sardaukar and Spy. So it's five swords. So Irulan now knows she has to spend both intrigues to win here. So where does she down bump? And here comes surely change allegiances. But the thing is, he thinks he's going to win. It's really weird with change allegiances what to do here. I guess you hold it in hand. Yes, yeah, you hold it in hand here. So irulan has got to decide where she's down bumping. I assume she's down bumping like the, the Spacing Guild is my guess. But I don't honestly know. This will be disappointing for Gurney. But Gurney might well take the Highlander contract with Reach Agreement. Staban finding Public Spectacle is absolutely crazy. Crazy, by the way. What a find that was. So. It's going to play as this. Irulan's just got to work out where she's... Where, where she's dropping. 
So Spy goes. And it is the Spacing Guild. 10 strength will do it. And I will take this down. There's nothing Gurney can do. Best he can do is retreat some troops. He'll be disappointed here. But. Alas. Might as well retreat them both here. Takes the council bump. Interesting. So, Irulan picks up a wild card here. So, if she can find another matching symbol through uh, a battle or an intrigue, she can get a point out of that. Finds go to ground, which is not helping her. It's six spice and two intrigues for Gurney. No. What? How does Gurney find their nation? Come on. He cannot complain about his draw for a lot of this. Oh, that's wild. And now the wall convict comes out and now he finds the ball break. Pretty insane. Well, Margo's up first and she's drawn a horror hand here. Pretty hideous. It's Arakeen. It's a sword conflict. Everyone can match of it. Every single person here can match of this. So. Margot just espionages and will take a spacing point. Nothing else she can really do here. Things looking pretty bad for, for Margot, truthfully. She's, try she's desperate to find one more faction bump so she can opportunism. Any faction bump is good. I don't quite know where she's going to put it, truthfully, this, this spy. You kind of want to put it to a faction if you find Diplo. The problem is you've got to find Diplo. <laughs> but I think you're still meant to put it at a faction. Probably like the Fremen or something, maybe, for Frem kit. If you put it there, you can only ever go back to secrets is the problem. I think the Fremen is slightly better because of Frem kit. But the problem is, is someone might go Frem kit anyways, because obviously there is contention with this alliance. Six one half nine. You've got the double. You've got the solar card contract actually. So yeah, that makes actual logical sense. Put up there if you find it. What does Gurney want to do here? Gurney can use um, his ecological in the double water at a fact at a Fremen spot and double draw. He's got no spy at Hagger Basin, but obviously the wall was down. Or the wall was up even. So he might figure as long as he keeps one water, like if he goes Frem kit and just draws a ton of cards here, as long as he keeps one water around, he'll be fine. Might go High Council first because of ambition and does. Man, what a setup this is for Gurney Halleck in this situation. What a draw out. Irulan needs to end this game immediately, but her hand is hideous. She's only got one spy down, so Benny Operative is not is only worth one persuasion here. Any spice will slow his duffel points. She's at nine. I think she just goes contract here and draws. It's fine spy master. Highlander contract now being readied up here. Spacing Alliance is still in danger, by the way. I don't know what Stabarn's going to do. Stabarn feels like he's meant to defend here, but he's also going to just go to the secrets, Bene Gesserit, and just get the point. Really strange spots for Stabarn. He could also go Fremen and get a point, because that would allow Strategic to stop piling to cash in the water, which currently he can't. Difficult spot, this. 
man. Gurney's still sitting on change niches as well. I think they're going to talk themselves in defending. Oh, they don't. <laughs> they're like, okay, if you want it, you have it. That's pretty amazing. So Frem kits it for stockpiling. That's a weird looking move. As I say, people usually, when they make strange moves, they do it for typical reasons. Like, if I was sitting there as Gurney, I'd be thinking, have they pulled stockpiling? Red's certainly suggesting they've probably got stockpiling. Red's also pulled Space Guild Favor, by the way. So Staban might just go straight deep desert to cash in stockpiling's both points and then reveal Space Guild's Favor to get the, the Bene Gesture point. That gets him to 10. But they're only at 8 Persuasion. That Spice of Slow card is causing no end of problems here. If they could fluke a two persuasion card, they might just hard reveal and just say, "I've got, I've got Spicer's Flow as well. It's eleven points, and it's the best I'm ever going to do here." I think that's where the bar might be here. It's the best move I can see for him. Batter Margo. Like it just has to be Arakeen, right? And I actually think I would be using uh, undercover assets to do it as well. I think you need every single persuasion point you can muster. I don't feel like any of our assets uh, reveal effects is of any use to you is the problem here. That's why I kind of don't like this. Well, Rebel Supplier and Convincing Found. I don't think we have much different. Still at six. So it's going to be Siege and Rebel Supplier blast off, I guess. Marg will be frustrated here. It's drawn pretty poorly. I actually think Margot's best move is to go shipping now. Because then she can at least cash an opportunism. I think that's actually her best move. At least that's a point. But a pretty, pretty dismal run out here for, for, for Unlucky Pal. And here it comes. Here it comes. Desert Tactics. And Gurney's going to get hold of both alliances here. And Worms to come. This round has set out about as well as it humanely could have done. Would you like some uh, Depart from Arrakis on top of that as well? Merry Christmas. This is going to win the game here. This is going to just absolutely win this match. I feel like they have been somewhat fortunate in how this game has run out. I really think they should have blown the wall around six. I think that was a real mistake. But propaganda came out, so it didn't matter. And Worms to come and depart from Arrakis is going to just take this down. This is just going to be over. Don't think they're going to be stoppable here. Irulan blasts it with high line. She gets an intrigue, by the way. Spice must flow has been activated for her, which is pretty useful. She's actually found her way there. So double points is coming. Looks up her weirding for plus three swords. It's not going to make a difference. It's a fight for second. I think Irulan will win it. But I don't think there's much else that can be done here. I think it's the only moves the barn's got is to go deep desert and draw off of Dune. And hope that you get a two persuasion card. And you just reveal for Spice was Flow and cash in your two points. Cashing all your points. It's the only move that makes any sense. 
gives you the spice for stockpiling. Um, and it gives you the spice for spacing your favor just. Because spice, spice and slow reveals for eight. And then that gives you the lot. And you just cash empty out for a load of points. If you get the spice of slow as well, great. You're guaranteed at least three points. It's the only move I see that I think makes any logical sense. Unless you're hoping to... Yeah, well, they weren't going to get there anyways. Are they really threatening shipping? Oh my goodness me. They are threatening to ship and retake back the, spa the ba spacing alliance. Which is a disaster for Gurney. Because Gurney, of course, just wants to hit the get the worms and call it a day. And now look at this situation being put in. Meanwhile... Man, what a dirt draw I uh, draw out for Margo here. Absolute dirt. Feel real bad. I mean, they haven't done any trash in this game, so this, this can happen, but... So Gurney's got a choice now. If he goes Sardu Carl, the alliance is gone. Stabon will sacrifice here. So... Gurney's giving it up. He he finds the Chris Knife match, funnily enough, which is this conflict here. Although, I assume Gurney's just going in anyways. They don't have any spies to recall. But I think it I think it's the best move they've got is to go in Highline anyways. Certainly now. I wish they killed up any of the other matches than Chris Knife. But what are you going to do? Irulan's got nine. Irulan has to go research station. It's the only thing that makes logical sense, right? You're going to pull three cards, get the two troops in. You've got weirding behind you. You have to try to win this fight, right? It feels pretty uncomfortable, though. Only going Sardu Car there is scary. I rarely accept that, but I don't really see what else Iran can possibly do here. You have to get the spice for slow. You cannot compromise that. She's trying to work out if she draws three cards, she's trying to work out what this is compared to the pile. It's a spice for slow card, which is not good. So looking at the rest of her deck here. Yeah, the problem is Corinth's there as well, so she would have to pull. Two out of five cards here, and none and none of them could be Corinth. None of them can be Corinth City. So she's odds on to be good, but if she misses it, she loses two points. And if you're if a research station, do you think you win anyways? They're gonna gamble. Do not want to see Corinth on either draw. One. No, oh, they're good. They, they're okay. They're okay. Oh, actually, no, they've got two persuasion from council. Actually, I think they would have been fine anyways. Two, four, five, six, seven. Oh, actually, they were okay. My apologies. So Stabarn will retake the alliance and give up the stockpiling point. Unfortunate spot for for Stabar. Not really much he could have done there. Margo with a load of swords. To Mentat. Can't see this game going another round. Problem is, Gurney. Well, Gurney. Problem is, for Gurney, is it's hard for him to get lower troops. My assumption is Gurney Halleck is going to go depart from Arrakis off base him with his ring and just send in 
Just, just send in the clowns, basically. And then use detonation and just get absolutely everything in. Just flood the field with troops. You put in like one, two, three, four. So we're in like nine troops here. Plus his swords. He's got eight persuasion. If he pulls a two persuasion card, he even gets Spice of Slow on top as well. So. But Gurney has to hit the spot before he can do the Arrakis, of course. So here we go. Can Gurney have like fluke a two persuasion card? I feel he feels like it's coming. It feels like it's coming. No, he misses. Wow, misses it with Warmaster. He's short. So. So. Should, should probably resolve Arrakis first. So this is the. This is the basic. And then the Depart from Arrakis troops. And this would be detonation. So, yeah, get it all in. So the combat's going to be Gurney's. But it's not worth a lot for him. He only gets a couple of points out of it. Gurney needed that spice for slow and he missed it. What was his odds on that draw? Three out of seven. You feel a bit annoyed that he missed it there, but, you know, odds weren't his. And then the ring troop as well. So Gurney's going to get to 10. He's going to be reliant on spice toe breaks here. But Irulan's going to have this, I think. It's going to be close. It's going to be very close, this. I think Irulan's going to win this on Spice Tiebreak by the looks of it. Staban had chances of scoring a load of points, but it got scuppered. So all he can do is pay the stop piling point. He kind of wants to hold on to it, but there's nothing you can do. Cherry's a little bit unlucky how this has gone down. But that's the way it goes. Cherry will have to wait. Back to back wins. But he's going to have to wait longer here. Gurney should play Chris Knife here. for the extra spice but it's not going to matter so okay I guess there's nothing else to be played here so Staban only scores the one point But Irulan, I think, is going to get on Spice tiebreak. Oh, no. Gurney's going to get two, isn't he? No, he still gets the sword match. So he still gets to 11. So Irulan has to fluke an intrigue. It's been a hard game to cover this, truthfully. A lot has happened in this. A disappointing result for Unlucky. I think it's actually played not bad here. But he's just run up against it. Tactical option for Irulan is no good. So it's going to be second place. And Gurney Hallett gets there. Well, this oh, was this was a this was a an all over the place match. This um, <laughs> like just. Insane all the way, really. Uh, I mean, the way it started, I'm not surprised it carried on in that sort of vein. A bonkers opening round. Um, 
I, I, mm. I, I will say I do feel bad for Yellow. Like I think you actually played pretty solidly here. You just ran up against like just kind of madness here. I, I also you, you see it bad. I do think Blue ran pretty well this game. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sorry, just to oh, get the point from the, the card. Well, you already had the, you already had this, didn't you? You were you were yeah, already down. did. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's for the green, and then the extra the victory point for coming first. Yeah, yeah, that's why you scored two, right? No, so you'd be on eleven. Yeah. yeah, you should I'm be on eleven. Oh, I thought you'd given yourself that point. Yeah, no, he is at no, eleven. Sorry, I, yeah. Yeah, you get the point for this. I thought you had given yourself that. Yeah, there's uh, one for the battle, which is that, and yeah. then that's the match point. So, you're, yeah, you are at 11. I, I thought you'd already given yourself that. Oh, right. Nice. No, apologies. I'm... Yeah, you, you just couldn't do it twice for the... Yeah, that's the what you're saying. Yeah, so, yeah. So, so, yeah, no, it's, it's why we got oh, yeah, the points in there. So, yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry about that, Red. Yeah, who who was it that um stopped me from getting the two points from the battle? I forget who it oh, was. Oh, it was that. the Spring the Trap. Yeah, that was pretty... Yeah, that was, yeah. That was, yeah. That was, it, it was, was just It was what I didn't think you would have something that would... Make you guys feel any better, right? The turn that um, he jumped me with that one, uh, that was yeah. five points. I was going to get five yeah. points. That yeah, that, that was yeah. a, a lot happened. I mean, yeah, Spice Rate was, was wild, and Yellow was pretty... Yeah, he wasn't going to yeah, use it, it but then fun. he felt he had to do it just for the water as much as anything yeah. else. Um, so and it's the only card that that you lose to on that front. So that was pretty. Yeah, that was pretty. It was just like, well, it was kind of greedy on my front to not just put yeah. in one troop when I had six. In yeah, I mean, yes, but I think you're also it was, it was a bit unfortunate it went but down. Like, I, it, would, it would have just been a different game, yeah. really. I would have played yeah. a little bit differently if yeah. I had those points. I think you're also unfortunate to the fact that seven rounds, no walls. Like I cannot believe <laughs> yeah. that. I mean, especially yeah. like blue. <laughs> How did you not blow the wall round six? And he went siege. I cannot believe you didn't do that. And then it was propaganda, anyways. Yeah. I just could. I was like, you got. It's like you did it, and it was propaganda. I was like, unbelievable. So, you know, and you would, yeah, you were just like decked out for this round. Like you were going to take it down in some yeah. form or another, and you had shifting. Yeah. You were going to get alliances. Like it kind of ran out pretty well and you know like despite red's best efforts and red did the damage they could in this situation but yeah. you know it was there was much they could do there so i feel a little unfortunate over there but no it was it was it was a good game it was just 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 chaos really like yeah. hard one to cover just so much happened I... in sort of form you know the, the insta reveal for this like i had a feeling someone on the table was gonna insta reveal <laughs> i just i just i just felt it i was like i think someone's good i actually thought the barn was gonna insta reveal they had a horrendous hand and I think they should have insta revealed, maybe. I don't know. It's hard to do. Mm -hmm. But I, I really thought like what was double convincing double doom dagger. Like I think that's one of the reveals mm -hmm. as the barn. I think I just take spectacle and move on with my life. Yeah. You know, I made a huge mistake with uh sorry, go on. I made a huge mistake with the contracts like this one. I don't know why I even took delivery supplies. Because if I had taken harvest um on the turn on the previous turn i would have popped um corn city mm -hmm. and i would have been at 11 now so i guess i mean current comments is, is a tricky card it's, it's really good and it looks really nice but it can also get really awkward and i've i've i've, been, I've seen both sides of that where it just like you, to, you managed to get you know you managed to get like the you know the hit of it and obviously the last round was like trying to get the value out of it but you kind of can't you kind of getting dragged in and everything else like that so it can be really hard and of course if you're playing corinth it's hard to get the spice must flows which of course you needed for your, for your end game so there was a little mm -hmm. bit of awkwardness for that but maybe there was probably another way around it but i think it was it was yeah just it was just insane that we just ran seven straight rounds of no yeah. walls like i cannot believe yeah. that happened yeah that was so <laughs> like just everyone getting so many more resources than than myself but then it was just something. Yeah, there's not a lot you can do about that. That's just the way it goes down. Um, yeah. I, I It's the first game I've covered where it's been seven straight with no wall. I think I've played yeah. in one where it was like that, but that's about it. Like, I don't... I haven't worked out the odds of that, but it's... You know, it's we're talking... Tricky. We're talking, like, fraction of a percent, probably. Yeah, it's part of the game, though, so you have to, you have to live with it. 
Yeah. It was very good. I'm I'm glad you covered this one apart from my other two games because this is definitely <laughs> the best I played compared to the other two. Yeah, I I don't feel like you deserved fourth place here. I think you played better than that, but it was just it was a bit yeah. of a it was a bit of a rodeo this and someone was yeah, exactly. someone was gonna get thrown off it and uh you know, have neither neither trip to any. So here's a look at the table after that one, and it leaves everyone with one match to play. Cherry J and Rayvern are tied top of the table with 14 points, though Cherry with the far superior points uh, percentage to their name. Uh, the two of them do not play against each other in their final match, however, they are in separate fixtures, which probably benefits the pair of them, as they'll be both looking to cement their places in the top two. Uh, further down, however, Axel uh, managing to get himself sort of back into contention in this one. Uh, with the nine points, it's going to be involving a bit of scrap for fifth place. Unfortunately, Unlucky Pal is going to be eliminated from this early part of the competition. I really don't think he deserves it either. I, I, I think that he played reasonably solid. I think to make that immediate reveal for Spectacle, I think was an incredibly brave choice, um, and one that I, I don't entirely hate either. Um, but yeah, the 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 way the spice rate is comment went down absolutely torched his game, and it was just really hard to recover from that. That would have made such a big difference. Even managing to get a second or third place here, it'd be a different story. But now it's it's all but over, unfortunately for unlucky. Ray definitely will be super happy with the way this has gone down as well. As I say, I do think, you know, some some good stuff going on. And again, a completely ridiculous first round, finding his way to long the fight is. Um, but yeah, seven consecutive no wall fights um, was pretty wild as well. I imagine the benefit from a lot of that. Um, and yeah, just some some utter mayhem. Um, it was somewhat responsible for a lot of it and also was the beneficiary of a fair part of it as well. So... You know, you take it, it's six points in the bag. You know, you've got one foot, you feel, in the quarterfinals. you just got to get your way now there, though. But uh, what a, a roller coaster ride of a match this was here. I'm just, one of the hardest games I've ever had to call this. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry if there were some things I got wrong here and there. But trying to keep track of this one, not nah, impossible. Anyways, folks, thank you much for watching. Hope you guys have obviously enjoyed. If you do, please feel free to, you know, support the channel. You know, you can follow us here on YouTube. They've got Patreons, co fires that lovely good stuff. Um, and we'll be having more of the tournament for sure. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Take care of yourselves. We'll see you in the next conflict.